thank you so much to Sean and Marissa just initially for putting this whole thing together and just walking me through uh, you know, getting this whole thing put together. So thank you. Um, but anyway, so trade out. What's, what's the whole idea? We are throwing our hat into the brokerage ring, um, but we're kind of doing it uh, much differently than any other kind of brokerage that we've talked about you know, in the last you know, few hours here. Uh, there are three kind of like major things that I think we really want to convey uh, with TradeApp that uh, we, we, I hope to get across in this presentation. Uh, the first thing is uh, very contrary to what uh, Paul was saying earlier, is that we want it to be fun. We think that market and, and talking about stocks, talking about companies, I mean, this is a fun activity. We've built a community of millions of people who just spend their time you know, talking about different trade ideas, talking about markets, because they love to, because it's fun. And we don't think that uh, the, the actual mechanic of the trade should be any different. We think that should be a fun process as well. So that's, that's one big thing we want to get across with TradeApp. The other is why I think this is just such a perfect setting to discuss TradeApp is because one of the main mission statements, or the mission statement of trade ideas is you know, helping people make better trades. And internally, we don't really think of TradeApp as a brokerage, although it is. We really think TradeApp as a tool to help traders learn. And uh, we'll get into that more later. Um, but the third thing is social. You know, we are a social company. Social is in our DNA, and we think the trading experience should be social um, and not this solitary, you know, experience. Um, so what does it mean, like, when, when we try to share trades? That's one of the big things that we wanted to take a bite out of um, uh, because we see this posted on our platform a lot. That's so boring. No one wants to see this. This, is, this conveys nothing. It's not sexy. It's not cool. This not, does not translate a story. What we're trying to do is implement Tradecast into the vocabulary of financial media. Tradecast are fun, adding more to the breakouts. What the fuck? I am selling before. I learned a lot. Look at this stock. I got to get out. We're done. We're done. Uh, I'm so smart. Look at me getting out just when I plan. I'm a freaking genius. Uh, oh, there's me again. Oh, uh, when BTFD goes wrong, still uh, picking up things that are going along. Not learning much. Uh, I'm so interested in this product. I love this company forever. I'm going to go ahead and buy some of their stock. Broke the level I'm watching, I'm out. And you see you know, nice animated GIFs. And so when we're talking about sharing trades, we want, you know, a, tr a trade isn't a, a single point in time. A trade is a journey with a stock. It's an experience that lives uh, longer than just the when you go ahead and execute that initial thing. And we really want to encapsulate that journey with trade casting. And how this all works you know, mechanically is that you're going to open a position. Let's say you, you buy something in Stonks Incorporated. Uh, you, get, you get your trade executed. Uh, you have your, your trade order. And then when you get your trade order, you're also going to have a graph, um, like just on the screen here, uh, with your trade uh, and your point of time on that graph. Now, what you're able to do with this graph is add text, video, emojis, stickers. Uh, really, you can just go crazy with it. Or you can just share it as a blank canvas and not do anything at all. Um, and what's really cool about trade casting is this story is going to be with you along the journey of your stock. So as you add more to your position, as you sell out of your position, as you sell out entirely your position, this is going to be one piece of media that tells the entire story of how you interacted you know, with that particular stock. And so when we talk about the idea of sharing a trade, like, hey, like if you ask your friend, like, you know, I, I, I want to know like, what you've been doing. I want to know what trade you've been in. You don't have to like, send them weird screenshots of your Robin Hood like, order fill. No, you get to share with them like, your story as you lay it out. And so we think it's a really powerful experience. And one of the big things that we touched upon earlier is this idea of trading being a solitary thing. Like, we think we were social, right? It's, it's in our DNA. And trading shouldn't be a solitary experience. It should be something that we all share among one another because through that process, you know, we just become better traders altogether. Uh, and so we're really uh, fortunate and, and uh, excited uh, to see you know, the potential of, of Tradecast and, and what it's able to do. Uh, moving on. Uh, yeah, so financial media sucks uh, and, and books are dying. I know you're, it's probably very stereotypical for a 23-year-old kid uh, to be up here uh, harping on these, on these sentiments, um, but it's true. Um, I'm a big consumer of, of financial media. I watch the CNBC halftime report religiously. You know, I'm on Barron's, all their junky headlines. You know, I click them. You know, I, I'm, I'm responsible for their engagements and whatnot. Um, but when talking about like, financial media as a thing to help people learn and as a, as a tool to help people become better traders, you know, it's, it's 
a really perverse incentive structure where you have people who aren't necessarily writing things with the intent of actually conveying the information that you as a trader are, are really going to, to need or want. Um, there's this whole idea of like skin in the game, right? Who do you know, or what, the person writing this article, you don't know what their position is, you don't know what they're hiding behind the curtain, you don't know what their you know, agenda is. And so with TradeApp, we really want to just break down that, that uh, barrier of that, uh, you know, not knowing who's into what or who's invested into this. Um, and, and we're very optimistic that Tradecast is going to enable, uh, as a media product, uh, you know, change the landscape up a bit. And uh, books are dying. Uh, so before I worked uh, for StockTwitch, I was a professional poker player um, and worked with uh, Doug Polk at Upswing Poker uh, on their training content. And one of the things I, I believe fundamentally, uh, especially for the younger demographic, which is the demographic that kind of exists on StockTwitch uh, and we want to bring up, to introduce to markets, and we want the younger generation to be involved with traders. And when asking them like how to get better and how to learn, yeah, great, you can recommend a, a book and, and maybe nine times out of 10, they won't buy the book, but the one out of 10 that buys the book, you know, they might get like you know, five pages in. So like the 0.5% of people that actually buy the book and read it, you know, they're, gonna get, they're gonna get value out of the book. It's gonna, it's gonna be a good, good information dump for them. But you know, I think we can do better. I think we can actually get people involved at a, in a much more engaging way by you know, the sharing of, of video content and sharing of actual people's trades. Right? To be able to just see like, what people like Brian Shannon are trading. And just like, not without him having to explain anything, but you just get to see how he's doing it. And also how he behaves. Right? Because another huge element of, of trading is how you behave when you're doing a trade. And so by following people's trade casts and their experience on the social media app, you're learning so much more than just the technical side of things. You're learning how to handle being a winner, how to handle being a loser, and, and everything that comes with that. So we built Trade App for us. I mean, this is a very selfish product internally because this is something that we desperately want for our community. I mean, we have uh, one of the biggest things as like a community manager uh, for StockTwits that I get a lot of criticism for is that how do you know that the people that are you know, writing things on your platform or things like the sentiment that exists on Stockton, how do you know any of that's real? How do you know that's legit? Uh, instead of just people with you know, hidden agendas like we were saying earlier with like financial media, it's the same thing uh, for StockTwits users. Well, it's, that's a really hard problem to solve. You, know, you really can't know unless you really peek behind the curtain and know by looking at their actual traits. Um, and so this is a tool that you know, we just want for our community. And we are excited about what that means for, for kind of the larger grand scheme, but you know, this is a tool that we very much want ourselves because how much it's gonna you know, empower our, our, our own community. And also another thing, people learn through, through sharing, especially the younger demographic. I mean, through social and discovery is how this younger generation is picking up things that they're interested in, picking up trends. You know, the social influencers are creating the you know, agenda of people like you know, my younger sister. And all. They, they follow this stuff religiously. Uh, and because it's all done through sharing on social media. And so trading should be the same. We should be following the people that we look up to. The, the, we should be able to see you know, how they're trading and, and what they're trading. Uh, because you know, that's what the younger demographic, like they're, they're, they're right to think that. Um, and, and when we think they're right, uh, and so we're, we're very uh, bullish on the idea of uh, social sharing. And even though it's a very intimidating concept, I know, to, to let people kind of peek behind the curtain, you know, we think this is actually gonna do tremendous things uh, for a couple things. One, lost realization. You're gonna have to come to grips with your actual you know, trading journey and history. You're not gonna be able to wipe much things under the rug. Another thing that we hope in tandem with that is we're gonna normalize the process of losing. You know, trading, you're going to lose. And it's really frustrating, I think, for a lot of people when they're just getting into the trading space and they follow like these trading gurus online who only post you know, their biggest wins. And when you actually try to pry into like, their losses, you know, they're, they're actually big losers. But the only thing they share you know, are their big wins. So we're really hoping that with TradeApp and with Tradecasting, we're able to just normalize losing it and kind of tone the, the, the level of that, uh, you know, oh my God, I just made 100X on you know, this great trade. Meanwhile, you know, they're, they're just dumping money and everything else that doesn't work. You know, we're hoping this comes to normalize that process a bit. Um, 
So yeah, this is our, uh, this is our current wait list. Uh, we got 50,000, something like that, uh, trying to prompt the app. Uh, if you come connect with me, uh, either I'll be in the back, like over there. Um, let me know your email. Uh, download this app. It's only on iOS right now, but you can download it right now. Uh, come find me. Give me your email, uh, and I will make sure to get you to the very front of that list so you not have to wait uh, behind you know, 50,000 people. You'll be able to jump on uh, immediately. So uh, yeah, thank you guys. Um, find me if you need help. And thank you again to uh, Marissa, Sean, David, Dan, uh, CJ, Scott, like all the team. Uh, it's just really uh, grateful for me to be here and uh, for you guys to uh, entertain uh, my spiel. So thank you guys. <laughs>